Hi all, welcome to another Inner 5 Minute Chess Nutshell. I'm going to start the timer now. Okay, let's see. This is Benjamin Gladura against the Hikaru Nakamura in the Gibraltar Round 4. Benjamin is a very young grandmaster, 17 years old, hungry. So he's shot to uh, fame very, very quickly. Knight f3, d5 from Nakamura. We have g3, g6, c4. Nakamura took, knight a3, bishop g7, knight takes c4. This is the kind of setup, if you remember, that beat Magnus Carlsen. One of the GMs beat Magnus Carlsen in the World Rapid with this kind of setup. Knight c6, d3, e5, bishop d2, bishop heading for c3. It looks very logical to put pressure on e5, or it might just, uh, it's just making way for that c file pressure. Knight g e7, rook c1. Bishop e6, almost teasing knight g5, but at minimum the bishop can retreat. Maybe black can explore bishop d5 as well. So we have bishop g2, a5, preventing b4 from white could be useful. Both sides castle, b3. It looks as though white's position is pretty stable at this point. Now this knight g5 possibility is ruled out, slightly weakening the diagonal. f6. Queen c2, queen d7. As though maybe bishop h3 could be handy for black. Rook fd1. It can always be answered by bishop h1 now. Rook fd8, putting pressure on the d file. So playing more positionally now. Bishop c3. Knight d5. Now here's an interesting moment. Perhaps the bishop should be very carefully uh, considered. Uh, where it exactly needs to go. For example, d2 or a1. It went actually to b2. And there's a slight aspect of boiling the frog here. When I say boiling the frog, the queen actually has subtly been run out of squares a little bit. It hasn't got c3. It hasn't got b2. She hasn't got b2. And you know, if there's any more disruptions, this could be pretty painful. And here, actually, a seemingly very, very strong, powerful move is played. Bishop h6. And it is pretty uh, awkward, this position. It's actually pretty awkward indeed. Uh, if, for example, rook b1, then knight db4. And look at the a2 pawn. It's dropping. Yeah, this, this is pretty awkward. Where does the rook actually go? We have e3. It does weaken the d3 pawn. Now Nakamura doesn't try and pounce immediately. He plays actually a4, trying to weaken this structure. a3, and white all of a sudden finds himself in huge trouble after this. Clearly b4 would be attractive. That's never going to happen. Nakamura took on, on b3. And this creates a nightmare scenario for white. If white actually takes here, can you see what Nakamura has, which is very, very strong here? This is a variation in the game. What can black play here, do you think? It looks theoretically a bad idea to have this bishop looking at the queen, but in fact, can you see? There's b5 in this variation, so it takes. This is just very, very bad for white. White would have to give up material to stave off losing the queen in some sort of desperate manner here. Yeah, that's a very, very bad uh, scenario. So we have queen b1, bishop f8, d4, that's taken, bishop takes, queen f7, queen takes b3, but now knight b6 and white is in a world of pain. Knight fd2, knight takes c4, knight takes c4, and the final move, Knight a5, winning material. What a painful game for white. Okay, hope you enjoyed it. Comments, questions, appreciate it. Thanks very much.